Well, hey everyone, Ken Catania here from the Department of Biological Sciences at Vanderbilt University. And I'm gonna tell you about the latest study from the lab which covers my favorite insect, the emerald jewel wasp, and specifically how its larva feeds on its only host, the American cockroach. But before I get into the details of that, I wanna introduce you to this species by showing you the adult wasp attacking a cockroach and how it lays the egg on the cockroach, and then we'll pick up from there where the larva hatches and starts to feed. Okay. So here you're gonna see the wasp attack the cockroach in slow motion. It grabs part of the thorax, swings its abdomen into position to sting in part of the thorax that controls the cockroach front legs, and you'll see this closer up here, and that paralyzes temporarily the cockroach front legs and allows the wasp to next make a very precise sting into the cockroach brain. And the venom that's deposited there will cause long-term pacification of the cockroach, allowing the female wasp to then drag the cockroach to a hole. I'm not gonna show you that part, but then within the hole, the wasp will lay a single egg on one of the cockroach middle legs. After about three days, that egg will hatch the larva of the wasp begins to feed on hemolymph and then will crawl inside of the cockroach and, to, and feed from the inside. And that's where I'm gonna take the story back up. Okay, so now you've seen how the stage is set for this parasitoid to start eating the cockroach from the inside by entering at the leg. And before I tell you what happens, I wanted to mention that there's this his sort of historical idea that's been shown for many parasitoids that they tend to preserve the vital organs of their host so that they don't kill their host prematurely while they're essentially feeding on their, on their important food source. And so one of the things that was striking about this system is that the complete opposite seems to happen. And so that's what I'm gonna show you next. And I'm gonna um, show you the setup with a prop. I've got a Halloween prop giant cockroach here. So the larva enters uh, the base of the second leg and by, by shining a light through the bottom of the cockroach and using a microscope to look through the cuticle, you will uh, be able to see the feeding sequence of the larva. And essentially that's what I'm gonna show you next. There's a dorsal vessel, the, essentially the, the cockroach heart, and there's the respiratory system, the trachea, that are branching and running throughout uh, the cockroach, and these are systems that the larva essentially wantonly destroys uh, on its way to sort of eating the cockroach, and it does this very early on. So let me show you an annotated movie of that, and then I'll talk about some of the other findings. Okay, one thing to notice that this is all very early on in the feeding of the larva. It hasn't even fully entered the cockroach at this stage. There's part of it that's still outside, it's breaking open the tracheal system, air is being released, and when it gets to the dorsal vessel there, it just consumes it immediately. Okay, so I hope that video gave you a feel for what's going on as the larva makes entry. It uh, destroys the dorsal vessel in the thorax uh, very early on. Uh, but the plot thickened from there because, you know, one of the things I love about science is when you look at one thing, you often see something else in the picture that you weren't expecting. And for this, I'm gonna use another prop. Uh, I have here a chest burster from the movie Alien, a plush chest burster. I think it's appropriate for this bit of biology. Uh, so when the tracheal system is damaged and destroyed by the larva, air is released and that floats up to underneath the cuticle uh, in the dorsal part of the cuticle in the cockroach. The larva always enters with its its body canted to one side such that its own spiracles are facing upward and it uses its spiracles to associate with these air bubbles and actually will suck them in and it also seems to be essentially tapping in to the cockroach respiratory system as it makes its way into the cockroach body which is essentially pulling its own spiracles into the hemolymph of the cockroach sort of challenging it to have a way to breathe. And so I'm gonna show you the video. You really need to see this to appreciate it. Okay, so you've got everything labeled here if you wanna pause it and go back, but mainly look at the spiracle and its close association with the expanding and contracting air bubble that is attached to a broken trachea in the host. 
Now, to, to, if you're wondering, is it active? Are these spiracles active? Well, here's an example of an air bubble being sucked in by the larva's spiracle. And here's another example of the same thing. So they're clearly active within the host. All right, hopefully you got an idea now of what's going on, but why is it going on? Why does this parasitoid break into the dorsal vessel, destroy the tracheal respiratory system very early on compared to other parasitoids? And I'm gonna speculate here, but I think what's going on is that this is because of speed. So this is a parasitoid that eats the host very quickly compared to many other species. And therefore it probably doesn't have to preserve the vital organs to preserve the host because the host is gonna die relatively quickly anyway. But the flip side of that is that the very active parasitoid, ravenously eating, has a high metabolism compared to many other species. And that probably explains why it needs to tap into the respiratory system of the host pretty early on. Um, the, the next question, because there always is a next question, is why might this parasitoid have been selected for such speed? And I think there's some good clues to that, but you'll have to stay tuned to hear about them. All right, thanks for listening.